Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Martin McPhillamy, owner of Perform True Health. And in this session, we're going to talk about what's actually happening in the body when we go through these more prolonged acute levels of hyperventilation breath work. So your things such as conscious connected breathing, holotropic breath work, even potentially Wim Hof breath works. We're gonna talk about what happens within the body first, then what happens in the mind from the basis of my understanding of reading the literature for over 10 years and also delving into the a bit more of a depth psychology of some of Carl Jung's work, some of the affective neuroscience of uh, Yak Pansep and Mark Solms, and we're also going to include some of Ernest Rossi's work into state dependent memory. We're seeing breath work really kind of pop up everywhere at the moment because it's a real health trend. And it's nice to see because you know, for the majority of people, yes, altering breathing or connecting with their breath is going to have some benefit. However, there are some implications for certain individuals. And that is because we get vast changes in our physiology. So when we start to breathe for prolonged periods at what we call a hyperventilation. So essentially what that means is the amount of CO2 that our body is producing compared to how much it's blowing off is uh, is not balanced. So the energy requirements uh, are not matched to our breathing. We're breathing more than we need to and CO2 starts to lower in the body. This creates what's called hypocapnia. Now hypocapnia essentially is uh, a form of alkalosis because the level of pH in our blood and within our brain actually increases. So what happens in our body is we have uh, CO2 and water that we exhale out. That actually then converts into a uh, bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion. And when we blow off CO2, hydrogen ions drop, so we get a raisin pH above 7.45, which would cause alkalosis. And when that tends to happen, our body does a, a few different things. Uh, number one is it starts to vasoconstrict blood vessels at the peripheries, maybe in the heart and potentially actually even in the brain so as well. So for people who have cardiac issues or have cardiac disease, hyperventilation breath works could cause further issues with reduction in blood flow to the heart and therefore cause uh, myocardial infarctions or uh, an even worse potentially killing someone same as the ice that's sort of a different conversation anyway so if we get vasoconstriction then our hands might get cold they might get clammy um, some people actually even start to feel anxious when they hyperventilate because the nature of the the, the, the increase or of depth of breathing or the rate of breathing is going to activate the sympathetic nervous system and in fact, the, uh, in clinical science, we actually use the hyperventilation provocation test as an indicator for um, um, hyperventilation syndrome, which is an anxiety-based syndrome or panic-based syndrome. So if you do Wim Hof breath breathing or hyperventilation for roughly three minutes and that causes you to feel more anxious or causes a panic attack, that's a good indicator that you need to be doing functional breathing patterns and need to have some breathing retraining, both of which I can help you with. Um, Anyway, moving on. So what happens when we get vasoconstriction? Obviously, then blood flow comes back. It also gets pulled away from the brain and we get an increase in bicarbonates. Now, if we get a restriction in blood flow from the brain, this uh, is hypothesized to be more so in the prefrontal cortex. Uh, prefrontal cortex is our rational part of our brain. In fact, uh, our lateral dorsal prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that helps us interpret our, our perceptions. So what we feel and what we experience um, through affective motion, because remember the body feels first, we have what's called basic um, emotions, you know, anger, fear, sadness, uh, those things. We feel those first. We could say these are instinct. These are very kind of uh, high energy movements that are, are, are created for our survival, uh, sorry, have evolved for our survival um, through mammals into obviously now humans thousands of years later. But now we have this part of our brain that's developed to, to create a story, and rationalize those emotions. And that is based on two things. Number one, 
years of culture. Uh, so we get our morals, we get our, what, we can, what we're allowed to do with monk society and what we can't do among society. And that is ingrained into preventing some of our instincts and our emotions and how we experience the stories around them. And then our own personal experience. And these two here, what filter and create our conscious mind and our unconscious mind. So if we get a reduction of blood flow um, from hypofrontality to the, the dorsal uh, lateral the uh, prefrontal cortex, then actually during hyperventilation, we actually get a reduction in oxygen to those parts of the brains, but metabolic activity stays the same. So what could be happening there? This is speculative. And what I believe might be happening here is that we still need the energy supply. So that energy supply becomes anaerobic rather than aerobic for a certain extent. And therefore we might start to use things such as uh, lactate. And now lactate has now been shown to actually help form and store memories. So if we get in a flood of lactate, then we can start to potentially uh, uh, change memories. Now, What's going on neurophysiologically within the brain when we hyperventilate for long periods? We get an increase in what are called theta waves and delta waves, which are brain states that are associated with uh, deep meditation and also sleep. There's also some evidence to suggest that we get changes, alterations in gamma waves as well. And all three of these things are going to create what's called dissociative states or dreamlike states, out of body experiences. We have dissociation for a purpose, and that is so that most people can escape the body. And we can escape the body when the body doesn't feel safe. So for people that are traumatized or for people that uh, um, have high levels of stress, they might then become more mentally focused and not able to feel into their body and their emotions as, as well, uh, particularly people with post-traumatic stress disorder. They are going to be more uh, dissociated. And it's a bit like a, um, how would you describe it? It's a bit like a, like a floaty state. You're not really aware. Time's not really aware. And this is what hyperventilation puts you into, which also increases the risk of things such as uh, hypnosis. And we can hypnotize ourselves through self-suggestion. This is where it's important that when we do these long breath work sessions that we create an intention. Because when you create a personal intention, you are given a filter through which the ego can see the uh, the, the, the mind of the unconscious and create those stories based off the intention through self-suggestion. Also important why you need to have someone that you trust leading it because if you have someone that wants to sell you something or someone wants to bring you into a cult or someone that doesn't actually know what they're doing, their ego could lead to being transferred towards yours and therefore you take on their, their shit what they, their beliefs and um, their sales pitch. It's simple as that. You're more vulnerable. Why is that? Because like I said before, our mind, our ego mind, which we could say is the prefrontal cortex, that rational part of our mind, it's how we relate to our environment, it's how we relate to ourselves and who we believe ourselves are. Between that, we've got our personal and conscious, and we have, sorry, we've got the alter ego and our moral complex. Moral complex is basically everything that we've learned throughout society that is allowed in society. Anything that's not, it gets pushed into the unconscious. Those behaviors, those beliefs are all pushed down to uh, so that we don't act at those. Then on the other side, we have the alter ego. So the alter ego is basically like a, um, a way that the ego can balance itself homeostatically based on its beliefs. So I struggled for, for years. I believed that I had to be nice in relationships. And if I was nice, people were nice to me. So therefore, if I, my ego was like, I'm a nice guy, anything that I felt was not so nice would be suppressed into my unconscious and it wouldn't come out of my behavior. So therefore, things like assertiveness, my ability to speak up and, and to be firm and be vocal uh, to, towards uh, uh, females or even to other people uh, got subdued for a very long time and I had to work on that. I had to work on those things to, to bring those out. But it's the alter ego that essentially would push those, that, that behavior into my unconscious because my ego was being driven by the story that I'm a nice guy. So there's always a polarity or boundary that's being pushed down into the unconscious mind. Now, when we do these breath work sessions, 
What we're doing is we're creating this dissociative state, we're creating an increase in sympathetic nervous activity, which causes a lot of energy produced. That can be uh, you know, just normal energy that we would refer to in scientific language or Kundalini energy. And as that does, it creates a, uh, a movement of energy from the unconscious into the conscious mind but because we're dissociated we can't really rationalize it along the way however that may get picked up by what we call a psychological complex now a psychological complex is essentially something that is being suppressed or repressed from the past it might be a memory it might be an emotion it might be even a state when that gets suppressed into the unconscious mind it can either be unattached to the ego so that we're not even aware of it or it can be kind of like on the boundaries or attached and the ego's integrated that into its conscious mind and these complexes act like subpersonalities they sit within the unconscious and when they're triggered by something external that remind, reminds them of a previous trauma they take over our ego they infect it and they cause certain behaviors a good example of this is if you look at what happened with Will Smith and Chris Rock at the, uh, the, at that, uh, no, the Oscars Awards. Chris Rock was making a joke about his wife and his wife looked at him and Will Smith would have then, as we know from his relationship with his wife, there's a lot of insecurity there, would have been triggered instinctually to protect and to compete. But as a longer way, that instinctual energy to do that got picked up by one of his psychological complexes, which is related to his issues with his wife, which is being suppressed or repressed. We can see that. That driven a behavior. He got up on stage and was competitive, protective, and slapped the guy in the face. Now, this has happened, he even states now, he doesn't really remember it happening. It is all a blur to him. He was in this dissociated, complex, ego-driven state, which is basically like a form of possession. Now, what we do when we're doing breath work is we're actually creating a physiological state that could be similar to traumatic incidents, arousal states that are similar to anxiety, arousal states that are similar to some of these negative emotions or higher emotional states. But because we're not able to rationalize them, they get picked up by the complex on the way. The complex then is pushed through into the unconscious mind and we then recall maybe a, an experience, maybe an emotion, maybe a, a memory that is then um, reattached to the ego based on the intention prior to the session. So the intention, the intention might just be to, to heal or to uh, allow yourself to have a, some kind of release. That intention is going to give a direction for the ego to look at this complex when it's under a uh, hypnotic or a um, dissociative state. So when that happens, and then we stop doing our breathing, or we have these moments and we push through, all of a sudden then we start to get blood flow back to the brain again. Um, we, the, pre, the, the, the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex starts to uh, come back online. We can then look at this under a different lens because number one the level of endorphins that are being released from the breathwork itself the endocabadnoids and the uh, opiates that are released from to to help us numb pain we can experience these moments without really feeling the pain and can kind of rationalize them in a different way which can be very cathartic however if information is filtered from the unconscious to the conscious mind and someone does not have a healthy stable uh, psyche, then we can put people into neurosis and psychosis. And this is why it's very, very important that you don't play around with long hyperventilation breath works if you are not with someone who's grounded or you're not grounded yourself and you don't feel as if your psyche is healthy. Because it could, without intending to, create some form of issue with your mental health. So it's very it's very careful. It's also very wise to have an intention, have the right settings, right? The people around you to feel relaxed, to feel calm, to feel grounded, to understand that you can take yourself out and not to push yourself. Because despite this being a health trend, despite it being an image that people are portraying online, that these very big cathartic episodes are beneficial, they're not always slow. You don't always want to understand what's coming from your unconscious mind. You want to kind of gradually filter that through your brain, your conscious mind, sorry, 
as you age and mature and your psychic balance get more and more stable. So that's my understanding of what happens when we go for these acute prolonged hyperventilation breathwork sessions and we have these cathartic emotional releases. I hope you enjoyed the session. Drop any questions that you have about the physiology, about the psychology or about breathwork in general below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.